Thank you for tuning in to the Biz Nation podcast. My name is Kerry Zarb, and I've been helping business owners just like you go from headache to heaven in a heartbeat for over 20 years. I'll be giving you all the top advice for getting started in your business, but I'll also be speaking with some of the best business minds to inspire you with valuable insights to help you get ahead in your business. If you've ever hit a roadblock or lost your passion, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the Biz Nation podcast. I'm your host, Kerry Zarb, and when it comes to small business, I've got you covered. And today's guest is amazing. We have Patrick Twells from Nomad Designs. He is joining us to discuss websites, digital marketing, and anything else that comes up in today's conversation. And I'm really excited because before we get started, let me tell you that Patrick has over 18 years experience in the digital marketing space, and he is coming to us from Perth in Western Australia. Hey, Patrick, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Good to be here. Awesome. Now, Patrick, uh, let's kick it off with, I want to know a little bit about you and if you could do a bit of an intro for the listeners, what you do and who you are and, and what you've got going on. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my name's Patrick. As you know, I'm here in Perth, WA. So I live about um, 100 kilometres south of Perth, actually. So it's about an hour away in a small regional uh, country town. So, um yeah, basically doing uh, website development, search engine optimization, so digital marketing, um, but specializing in the really custom integrations and the custom builds. So that's the the real point of difference with you know with what we're doing is is it's um, yeah very much about actually finding what the business needs um, and then building something to fit them rather than trying to fit them into a box. So it's um, I like to sort of. I love languages and I, I sort of see it, um, the whole process as a bit of a language, you know, and when you become fluent in everything that's available and can be used, well, then you can start to create some really cool solutions. So that's, that's the kind of thing that, um, yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm doing now at the moment. Um, and yeah, that's sort of helping businesses that way. Awesome. Love it. And Patrick, tell me the name Nomad Designs. So there's something in that, right? <laughs> yeah, there is. So, I mean, I, yeah, I've, I've always loved travel and adventure. Um, and yeah, even, I mean, a little bit of the backstory, but uh, when I was 18, just about turning 19, um, I bought a one-way ticket to the UK and uh, I had $1,000 in my pocket. Um, and that was it. So I knew nobody. I went to stay with, my, with an auntie and uncle that I'd never met before. Um, and kind of decided to go conquer the world. So so it's kind of like that whole, yeah, nomadic lifestyle thing has always been appealing to me. Um, and then when I came back from the UK in 2006, I, um, I started business here and um, I decided that the, um, you know, a lot of people were sort of saying, you know, maybe you should go do it from Perth or, or Mandra, you know, bigger, bigger place kind of thing. And I, I sort of thought about that. And then I was like, firstly, I don't want to drive like a long way to my own job, <laughs> my own work. Um, and then I was also thinking like, you know, if, if I'm going to be telling people that digital marketing works, can work, and it can work for anybody, then I want to prove that. And so 15 years on, I'm still doing what I'm doing. I'm still living regional. Um, and, you know, for me, it's it's involved a lot of travel, which is good. I've loved it. Like I've, you know, regularly sort of travel, you know, five hours away driving um, to see clients and to, to generate clients and that sort of thing. So for me, that's been, um, yeah, a, a massive part of what I've done and how I do it. Um, but also my business partner um, is, you know, loves travel and adventure as well. So when when we started Nomad Designs, um, we were kind of looking at, at the space, who we wanted to work for, who would our ideal clients be, um, what, you know, what would give us the most enjoyment, how, you know, it's kind of the same as like how we're doing with other businesses, seeing what works for them, kind of doing the same thing for us going actually rather than, um, you know, how do we fit into this mold of a business owner? It's like, what are actually, how do we want to live our lives? Um, and how do we build a business to actually enable that to happen? So as we sort of started thinking that we were kind of like, it's pretty nomadic, isn't it really? Like we'll just, um, you know, go go to the client um experience the things that they do 
Um, and yeah, the, the domain name was available. The business name was available. Everything was available. And we're like, you know what? This is <laughs> it's very organic and meant to be. <laughs> Yeah, the stars aligned. Yeah. I love it. That's that's fantastic. So, Patrick, I want to dive into today's topics, and I say topics with a plural <laughs> because we're probably going to touch on a couple of different things. Where should we start? You you tell me. You guide the conversation of of I'm a small business owner. Yep. What what can you what can you help me with? What where are we going to start? Yeah. So I think that I don't know the a good place maybe to start would be to have a look at the difference between a website and an online presence. Um, I think that it's a, yeah, there's quite a disconnect between the two. And I think that people see a website as a cost and they see it as, um, you know, basically just a marketing tool. And so as long as they have one, then it's, that's all that matters. Or, you know, as long as it looks pretty, then at least that's doing its thing. But very few business owners actually take the time to, to think about um, how that website's performing or to learn how do you know whether it's performing or not. Um, and then, you know, to even understand there's more to there's more to online than just a website, you know. So the website is an investment, which means it should give you a return. And you should be able to see that return. You should be able to measure it, how that's performing, uh, make required changes. But it's not just about, like that website is that central point. So from an online presence point of view, your online presence is, everything you do online. So that's your, your social media, what you say, how you say it, what you put out there. It's blog posts, it's email marketing. It's like, um, yeah, and then, then even down to managing areas of your business through the back end of your website. So there's so much that goes into an online presence that I think nobody, well, not nobody, but, but many people don't even sort of consider that is possible. And it's been one of the, I think one of the most amazing things about this the last 12 18 months is that all of a sudden people have realized well hang on a minute like digital like it's a whole lot more than just a just a website so there's been a massive shift in in people's perceptions of, of what websites are for um, but also a massive shift in in how they see value so yeah it's not not just about um, that website bringing traffic or bringing sales it's more to it than that so that's good yeah, definitely. That that makes a lot of sense to me. And I guess we can all relate to the whole, we needed to move digital, you know, with the pandemic when it hit. And I guess that was such a shift in, in that space. Like you guys must have been crazy busy. Yeah, like, we're, crazy and busy. I think it also brings up an interesting point there too, because um, a lot of like a lot of people in this space were crazy busy. Um, and for me, there's, I don't know, for, for me, like, um, probably the, the biggest question I've, I ever asked myself and have for many years is, is what next, you know? And I think that if you, when you start to ask that question regularly, it doesn't matter how good the time is, doesn't matter what's going on. Um, when you start to ask that question, okay, this is where we are now, but what next? Um, it, an interesting thing happens, you know, because you, your whole focus kind of shifts. And so it was, I was really sort of thinking about that at the time. And I remember um, probably March last year, just sort of going, gee, you know, like literally um, the the adoption of, of technology um, and digital in business has just completely flipped around, like in, in a such a short amount of time has completely flipped around and everyone's knee-jerk reaction, everyone plowed all their money into that. They, they're like, yeah, we need to set all these systems up, need everything happening. Um, and from from our point of view as a, as a digital provider, I feel like there's, you know, there's an ethical part there to sort of go, well, you know what, like, don't put all your eggs in that basket because what happens next? What happens after this pandemic? What happens when people aren't in lockdown anymore and start coming back? Um, and it's an, it's an interesting thing. I spoke to, um, to Amy Jacobson. I don't know if you know, you know her, but I was asking her because I, I was thinking, you know, like, is the pandemic enough to change people's behaviours? And actually, you know, mm. is, is, does that mean that after when everything goes back <clears throat> and people have the choice between digital and non-digital, are they simply going to go, oh, okay, we'll choose digital because now, now we're comfortable with that? Because it didn't sit right with me. Yeah. It didn't seem like that was what was going to happen. <laughs> um, and speaking with her mm. was interesting because, it, you know, again, the, the questions really that she posed was, was really like, well, it depends on what's caused the change. And usually behaviours that, that um, you know, are caused, caused by fear um, 
they don't stick. They will revert. And it's, that's an interesting thing itself because then you go, well, hang on a minute. If that's the case and people, there's this fear of, you know, everyone's changed this because they don't want their business to collapse or fail or whatever, but now they've got no money in the reserves. They've got no, you know, they've changed all their processes. They've changed, like, changed everything. What what happens next? Um, and so it was, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think people in our space really, you know, and, and many of them did, but I, I think some sort of saw it as, a, as an opportunity just to generate revenue and, and that was it. Um, but I think it was important, well, I felt it was important to actually educate um, these business owners and sort of go, all right, just just because you can doesn't mean you should. So let's let's right. take this, let's see what, what we can change, let's see what we should change, um, and let's kind of find a way that if everything was to flip back again, are you in a position where you're actually resilient now? Are you in a position where you can maximise and, and sort of capitalise on both digital and non-digital? Um and yeah, just e- even more interesting, just the other, like last week or before, um, speaking to Professor Gary Martin from the Australian Institute of Management, WA, I asked him the question, you know, because all their training was all, is very much face-to-face. Um, and they had a complete, had to do a complete shift. And I was asking him this question, now that things are completely different here in WA, like, what are people doing? Um, and he said, it was very interesting. He said, like, because now they have the ability to do both. So they offer the ability to do yeah. both. And what do people pick? Face-to-face. Like people are not, wow. <laughs> you know, and it was like, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a light bulb moment because it's what I expected. And I, I, love, I, mean, I love it, the fact that um, we're now in this place where people have the option because that's cool. Um, but I do find it very interesting yeah. that people still um, value that face-to-face, that connection and that engagement with people in real life. So, yeah, very interesting. And Patrick, why is that? Because in my like kind of opinion, I I wouldn't have he- expected that to flip, I guess, back. And and we know it's not fully there yet, but I wouldn't have expected that to flip back so 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 strongly, I guess. You I know, know what you mean. Um, Do you know what I, I mean? Think, you know, as I was sort of thinking that like um that whole process through initially, it was yeah, I asked that same question, you know, like in, in, how how much is this gonna flip? And I think that sort of, um, mm. yeah, I think that mixture of, of, yeah, you sort of, you sort of hit that, um, that middle point, you know, you've gone from one extreme to the other extreme and then now you're back in the middle. And then I think now it'll be more of a gradual mm. sort of change to, to more digital and less non-digital. Um, but I don't think it'll ever change dramatically, you know, forever. I think it's just sort of circumstances that'll do that. So yeah, I think that change, as I say, like I don't think people's behaviours have changed so much. They know they can shop online. They know they can, you know, do things online and that's they'll do that more now than they did used to. Um, but yeah. given the option, I think people prefer to, to speak to someone and sort of go, actually, you know, is this a right fit? Is this going to work? Is this, you know, that kind of thing? Um, because I guess that's, yeah, we're human. Like we... <laughs> We're human. That's right. What, what can you? What yeah. else can you say to that, really? Because at the end of the day, the face-to-face connection sure. is so powerful and and yeah. so natural to us as as humans. We're used to that. I, I guess um, from where I was coming from, like it's so convenient mm. online. And I guess that, like what you said, exactly that. That you know, for those that need that convenience, that can't turn up face to face, like there's definitely a new space that's opened yeah. for that, which is exciting. Um, but at the same time, it's it's definitely yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting to watch this all unfold. I think it's definitely going to you know shift and change and kind of bob around and and in different places, you know, with different circumstances as yeah, we're yeah. still going through this pandemic and yeah watching that evolve as well is is certainly interesting you're listening to the biz nation podcast i would love to connect with you outside of the podcast and you can find me on clubhouse instagram facebook or linkedin by searching my name kerry zarb or directly on my website at kerryzarb.club And don't forget, if you need more support in your business, you can find the community on Facebook at BizNation Support Group. Patrick, I want to ask you as well, 
let's talk about that online presence because you touched on it before about, you know, the, the traditional website, the return on investment on that. But when you talk about online presence, I think it's a bigger conversation. Like you're, you're probably, tell me, like what, what, are we, what are we talking about with online presence in a, in a larger scale? Yeah, sure. So I, I think I always find it very interesting to have a look at people's websites after you've met them in person. Um, and not necessarily even in person, but, um, you know, even Zoom chats and, and digital chats, that kind of thing, you know, it's interesting then because the people, how they are, what they're passionate about, what they, what excites them, um, you know, what they don't like, there's, there's so much about a person and about who they are <clears throat> that, um, you know, it's, that's what you want to convey. Like that's who, that's your brand. Like as in, as a business owner, um, you're, you do what you do because you, you you love it essentially. I mean, you wouldn't keep doing it. You wouldn't get up every day if you didn't love what you do because business is hard <laughs> mm. and it's, you know, there, there's good points, but there, there's certainly some bad points as well. Um, and it's super hard work. So you wouldn't do it if you didn't love it. And whatever it is you do, you're feeling a need, you're helping people. There, there's this, um, there's this whole, desire to to do something to be better to be the best to be better than your competitors that that's this whole that's what that's all about and i think that when you jump online if you don't get that then there's room for improvement i think that mm -hmm. when you jump on that website when you jump on social media how people and you find even on social media um you know especially on things like clubhouse for example you know you can see someone in one room and they're one way and you see them in another room and they're another way and and you, your brain just doesn't compute and you're sort of going yeah well hang on a second like you're a completely different i didn't realize you're a different person like so it's it's a very interesting space you know and i think that that's um how you act how you talk what you do um should be consistent across everything so um in terms of the online presence everything needs to be speaking the same language. So the, the kinds of graphics you use, the professionalism, the, the colors, the styles, everything, you know, has to be consistent, but it also has to be consistent with your brand, with who you are, um, what you believe and why you believe it. So I think those, um, when it comes to an online presence, to me, your website is that central point that everything has to come to, you know, too many mm. people I think are, are like, you know, all right, we've got a Facebook page. Why do we need a website? Well, you don't have any stats. You've got no information. You've got no performance. You've got nowhere when they get there, like as in how do you tell them what else you do? How do you, you know, if, if you decide that you you want to promote something or, or explain something in a different way or share some, some knowledge, information, like how do you actually, um, how do you do that? Like, and your website mm. is, is the part of, that's your digital space that you own. Everything else is like borrowed land. So, so this is yeah. like what you yeah. own, what you can change, what you can do, whatever you want with, and you can export that data. You can use that however you need to better your business. So for me, yeah, website is just one part of, of this whole online digital presence for sure. Mm, but you touched on something quite valuable there, Patrick, is this, you know, social media. We know the audio spaces are just like exploding at the moment. <laughs> like that's yeah. just, yeah. that's a whole nother conversation in itself. But um, yeah, that, that brand consistency is important, you know, for your, for you or your business, your, your brand space, whether it's your business brand or your personal brand, but also, um, yeah, definitely understanding first and foremost, yes, a website is important and the key reason I think it's important is that's your heart and soul and, and that that is your yeah. base hub of your business. Even if you're not uh, an online business, you know, uh, it's very often that I see the local restaurant or cafe that have a website with their menu and, sure. and that type of thing. So, and I think the social media really needs to be considered the extension, you know, where we yes. can reach a greater audience and spread our online presence, but not have all our eggs in those baskets because that's dangerous as we know. Yeah, definitely. No, and I think, it, you know, what you touched on there too, you know, the, the local restaurant having a, a, a website, I think it's, um, it's interesting hearing people's perceptions on who should have a website, or who needs a website. Um, because yeah, in short, I think everyone needs a website mm. and I, you know, maybe I'm biased, but, but I think there's a reason for that. Like I, you know, you, your local restaurant, you may sort of go, well, everyone in town knows what they provide. Everyone in town knows what they do, but you know what? People are prepared to drive 40 minutes 
well, certainly we are. We drive 40 minutes to, to our nearest yeah. biggest town, you know. I drive an hour and an hour and 10 minutes to Perth. Like, you know, so that's not uncommon. It's not unusual. So, yeah, why would you not want something that actually promotes what you do to them? Yeah, and I I just took out a couple of things of what you just said there because restaurants, it could be an electrician or a plumber or anything like that. We've got to consider in even in a trades business that people arrive new to an area. So they, you know, the old let your fingers do the walking is across your keyboard (laughs) or or on your digital phone, you know. Yeah. Um, So those opportunities uh, could be lost without a website for for those uh, particular industries and, and those professionals. But also tourism, you know, we know it's been kind of shut down throughout COVID and, and that's been a really sad time, but people are starting to travel and starting to re-explore as, as yep. different areas, you know, reopen. Um, like you said, you know, we've got both sides now. We've got the digital yeah. side and the face-to-face side and people want to get back out there. So to be able to be found online with your website for whatever business you have and, and for those two aspects alone is is key in, in my it opinion. Is- and yeah. it's not even just about being found, to be honest, <laughs> because even if you take the local restaurant, for example, um, what again, what next? Th- mm. This question comes up again and again, you know, like, so you go for a meal, but what next? Like, you, you know, you have the ability to capture their details, like an email address, for example, a review, um, mm. you know, some information from everyone that walks through your door. If you have 50,000 customers a year, if you have a thousand customers here, it doesn't matter. Like, but you have this ability to actually um, give them the opportunity for ongoing engagement. Mm. Now, that's their choice. Obviously, they have to opt into that. But if you're not giving them that choice, and I'm not talking like a, a paper form where you fill out like mm. your, your name and email address, because people don't fill it in because it takes time, and that information never gets put into somewhere because that takes time. But to have like a, a, a tablet at the point of sale that, for example, that just goes, hey, how did you find us? Here's five faces, pick one, leave a note if you want. Like it's super simple, easy to use. And another sort of great example of that digital, um, you know, integration with your business. It's not marketing. It's not bringing people there. But while they're there, they give a review, which is going to help you online to get found more. Um, But also they've given you permission to actually engage with them after the fact. And so all of a sudden, like you've got this, absolutely cost effective cheap way to to you know email out a thousand people five thousand people like it doesn't matter but and then you can also segment those which essentially you know depending on how you set everything up but you can be like hey we've got it's steak night tonight so Mm. like let's send an email out to everybody that loves steak and we know that because they came on a steak night and they've left a good review about steak. You know what I mean? That there's yeah. there's a lot of ways that you can when you think things through um, on that digital side, you can sort of go, what like, yeah, what information and details would be useful for us? How do we capture those? Um, and then and then how do we actually ensure that keeps going on? Because that way it's like you're not waiting for them to come through your door, which I think is quite like an old mentality when it comes to business you know like i know a lot of people have been in business for for many many years and and that's been the case you set your business up where the most put traffic is and you wait for people to come through your door and Mm. yes you do sort of some yeah you do marketing but essentially that's the majority of your business comes from that and it's not that way anymore and it can't be that way anymore and if you want to actually um succeed and if you want to be better than your competitors start doing things where you're actually taking action and you're the one actually going, Hey, you know what? Come, come back, come here again, yeah. because we loved having you uh, and we want you back and people are prepared to drive for that. So, Hey, let's, you know, let's do it. So I think there's yeah, huge potential there. Um, not just getting found, but the after mm. as well. What next? And the other thing that I just thought of too, Patrick, is that um, that return customer, yep. we all know the base, you know, kind of principles to, you know, it costs a lot more to get a new customer than Mm. to retain existing customers. So, and that's something that I've always believed in for for many, many years. So yeah, being able to capture details and promote to them, you know, offer those, you know, I've seen so many businesses change and evolve over the time. And and I think a lot more capturing the online presence and and Mm. doing a really good job of it. And um, it's thanks to people like you out there promoting that space so definitely that's that's awesome that you're a part of that I guess what what else though like you know online 
you know, we meet people, we meet people online. Like there's, you know, so many social hubs these days like our Facebook and our Instagram and the audio platforms that we won't go into. Um, But yeah, well, um, but yeah, like what, what else, what else do you recommend for just a, a, a final tip for the listener to what, what should they be doing online presence wise in in a networking capacity? Oh, in a networking capacity, it's a, a, a really interesting space because again, um, you know, it's I always think it's one of those things that takes a little bit of effort, and because it takes a little bit of effort, ninety percent of your competitors aren't doing it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you've got a bit of an advantage straight up. Um, but secondly, you want to sort of position yourself as as an authority in that space. Now, you don't have to position yourself as a thought leader. You don't have to be writing white papers or blog posts every week or anything like that. But again, it comes down to that brand consistency. Now, if you're actually engaging with people, whether that's on Instagram, whether that's in, in Facebook or, or LinkedIn or wherever that is, if you're engaging, like actually engaging with people, not just liking photos, but um, mm you know, commenting on things Um, as a a good example for that, for example, even, you know, like I say, I was talking to Amy Jacobson before. Um, I think we've known each other for probably nearly four years. Um, We connected through LinkedIn um, and she lives 40 minutes drive away from me or not even, it's like half an hour drive away from me. And yet I'd never met her until a week and a half or a couple of weeks ago. Um, just Mm. because that engagement all happened and that relationship was built. And when we met, it was like, you know, like friends, you know each other, like as in it was great to see each other and to to finally, you know, do that. And similar sort of thing through Clubhouse. I've met some people there in real life in Perth here. And again, like it's because there's that level of engagement that you, um, yeah, like you you just know them and and you sort of like that works and that's fine. Uh, And they understand and they know what you can do. And so I think mm. that, and that's without you even telling them, like, as in it's just through conversation, yeah. you, you, you know, you, yeah, you ask what they do and whatever, but it's not a sell and it's not a, no. you know, it's not a pitch or anything like that. It's just literally, oh, well, that's what I do. What do you do? Um, mm. So it's a, it's a really interesting thing. And I think I personally think that's very much key to, um, to successful networking. I think for me, it's like, forget the sale, forget the pitch. If you're going to go networking, yeah. actually, you know, I, I, I would probably say, and I have no stats to prove this up, but but I would probably say in the last 15 years, I've probably got more business out of the people who, um, the people who know the people I know, <laughs> if that makes sense, yep. because I've built a relationship with these people and they've referred me to others. So the work hasn't necessarily come from them, but it's come from the next sort of level along. Um, so I mm. think that, yeah, I, I sort of forget the sale, so I forget the pitch and I just sort of focus. I connect my, my sort of strategy, I think, from a business to business point of view. Um, LinkedIn has been amazing. Um, and for me, whether it's LinkedIn or not, I sort of take two approaches. I, I think there's kind of two directions for networking. Um, one is that, like, I will connect with people who I feel I could help or, or you know, benefit through what I, through what I do and how I do it. So if I see someone's website and I can tell that they're genuine and I can see, um, you know, how in fact it didn't happen yesterday and just getting in touch with them and just going, hey, you know what, like you don't know me, I don't know you, um, but I've noticed a couple of things about your website. We'd love to have a chat with you. You know, that'd be great. Um, and it's mm-hmm. it's an interesting, that's an interesting thing in itself because you're, you're giving something and that yeah. gets received really well. So I think the the sort of, if you want to call it a conversion rate, but the amount of like, yeah, the amount of people that accept that help is huge because they know you're not, mm. yeah, you're not after something. And I think the same is in reverse. I'll connect with people who are way above me, people who um, you wouldn't normally even think of connecting with, people who inspire me. Um, and I literally, you know, and, and this is not just people who, I think it probably if they inspire you, it's probably because there's something that you have in common. There's something that you see in them that you go, actually, like that resonates with me. I would love to do that. I'd love to be like that. And I think that, um, so for me, yeah, I will connect with those people because I have something genuine to say to them. I'm not just going, hey, yeah. I just want to ride on your coattails or hey, I just want to, you know, know someone famous or anything like that. It's like, actually, this is what I'm interested in. This is who I am. Um, I'd love to catch up for a coffee or a beer sometime you know, let me know if you're Mm. up for it. And again, like amazing how many people like actually accept that offer of coffee um, or a beer. Um, Mm. 
mm-hmm. and you just get to sit with them you know like for is literally I, I'll, I'll i take the approach of hey look you know i'd love just half an hour to an hour of your time just to have a chat um i'll buy you a coffee like let's just you know if you're up for it let's do it and they do and and you know mm-hmm. amazing relationships have been built that way so from a networking point of view like i say i think there's kind of the there's those two ways but i really think it's it's got to be about building relationships and engaging with people definitely i agree with that all of that so much because when i think about all of these spaces and and it's strange and i don't like to harp on about clubhouse too much on the show because i've practically done it for six months but i can't help myself i have to i have to bring it in because we have those conversations with complete strangers that end up living just down the road how many people we yeah. can meet across the world that people that we just wouldn't have met you know and yeah. engaged with because either you're in completely different industries or completely different walks of life but yeah, yeah these platforms connect us and exactly that the relationship is just formed so naturally and and yeah. it's lovely it's really really nice yeah no, well, I think we're only sitting here today because we met in a clubhouse room. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Proof. Proof right there. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think the other aspect that I I took out of what you said, Patrick, it, you know, online networking, but it's really online relationship building. That's For sure. That's huge, you know, in itself. It, there's just, yeah, the relationships can just be amazing. And back to what you said before, you know, the word of mouth, it's not dead, yeah. you know. No, like Not at all. <laughs> and, and the other one that I've, I've come across more recently as well as a result of some of these relationship building endeavours that I've been on is the old barter system is coming back as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so, there's a fair bit of that. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've certainly, yeah, done a deal or two in my time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's great. It's great. Uh, I, it works really well. So, well, Patrick, um, thank you for sharing all of that insight and, you know, your knowledge and, and what's happening in the digital space so that's just yeah, super that's right. fantastic i want to step into a little segment <laughs> that i have for the show sure. i have i have my tin uh, <laughs> and I've seen in, the tin. <laughs> you've seen the tin and inside this tin is i'm going to select five random questions just so we can get to know you a little bit more sure so I will pick out five questions, and I really hope they're not the same questions that I pick time and time again. It's very random. It's it's completely random. So I have five questions. So, Patrick, are you ready? I think so. Okay. We are going to go with the first question. Are you a pet owner, and is it a cat, a dog, a bird, or something else? Uh, I'm not a pet owner. Um, oh. And so... But if I was to be one, mm-hmm. I think it would be a cat. Yeah. So, yeah, I've never really been – we never had pets growing up. Um, well, not really. Like, we did have some cats, which is probably why I'm sort of more inclined that way. But, um, yeah, I've never never really been a dog person and mm-hmm. uh, just pets in general. I think because I just like to be spontaneous and to sort of get up and go, <laughs> sometimes it's not always conducive to pets. <laughs> that, so, that's um, true. That's but, true. Yeah, so probably a cat if I had one. And, and why would you choose a cat if you were to choose a pet? Probably a little more independent. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that uh, that also, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just like them. I think they're cool. <laughs> I think they can they can sometimes have a little bit of extra attitude in there oh, as sure. well <laughs> with the independence. So yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Next question is: Are you a sports fan? And if so. Which is your favourite? I am. Um, I love Ooh. soccer. Soccer is my favourite. So, um, yeah, as a kid, so we went to the UK in 1988 for two years um, and that sort of introduced me, I suppose, to, to soccer there. And so when we came back here, AFL was never really my thing. Um, so even though soccer wasn't and still isn't kind of mainstream here, it's just something I've always like loved. Um, and I love the the skill that's involved. I know everyone talks mm. about the fact that you know there's just like so many goal <laughs> in in soccer, but um, but like for me, it's about the shots on goal. It's about the the skill. The footwork is just some of these. Oh. I just I have no idea how these people do it, you know. And and I can literally like be scrolling through it through an Instagram feed, watching a video, you know. And I just 
yeah, it just makes me, yeah, it makes me smile. I just go, gee, you know, I've got no idea how they do that. But I love watching people who who are at the top of their game. I don't care what, mm-hmm. whether it's sport, whether it's whatever. I love seeing that because I know how much work's gone into that. And it, that I admire, that really inspires me. I just go, I want to do that for my stuff. So, so yeah, so sport, um, yeah, soccer, I love it. I love mm-hmm. English, English Premier League and, um, and Perth Glory head up to their games mm-hmm. as well, so. And, and Patrick, have you got some little footwork moves behind the scenes? No, so I've never been great. <laughs> and I think that's probably why I, I appreciate it so much because, like, I love getting out there with the soccer ball. But, uh, I, yeah, I can I can impress an 11-year-old. I've got an 11-year-old son. So I can impress 11-year-olds, his mates and all the rest of it, and that's about my limit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask for much more. That's fair enough. All right, moving on to the next question. Hmm. We're really getting to know you here, Patrick. I like this. For you, is it trains, boats, or planes, or none of the above? That see, and now I probably have to ask like a another question around that, maybe. Mm. So Mm. go for it. Yeah, because is it what I would like or what I do? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> oh, can we have both answers? Can we have both? Yeah, we can have we can have both. So, so yeah, literally, like again, living an hour and a bit away from Perth. So sometimes I'll park the car in manager and jump on a train because it's just mm-hmm. sometimes that's a little bit easier rather than having to find parking or to you know it depends what I'm doing. So so mm-hmm. trains is kind of like the thing that happens, um, but planes, mm-hmm. yeah, planes would have to be. I love because if I'm on a plane, I'm traveling somewhere, and if I'm traveling somewhere, then I'm happy. Um, and I think I, I used to, um, yeah, an interesting thing. So, so obviously going to the UK at, at that age, 18, 19, um, I, it was, yeah, traveling first time by myself, um, had no clue. Um, and so, yeah, I, I remember being in the airports and just being like sensory overload. Like, where do I look? Yeah. What do I do? How do I know you, which plane I'm going to get on or where I've got to go and all the rest of it? Um, and so I remember saying to myself, like, you know, I would love for airports to be as common and blasé um, as train stations for me. So, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I got to that point where actually now, like, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I love it. So, so yeah, that's kind of, planes would be the thing, I reckon. The airport's got a particular buzz oh, about it. it, doesn't yeah. it? Like, you're right, you walk <laughs> in and... Wow, like there's so much going on and, and, and sometimes you sit back. I've done this. You've actually sat back and gone, hang on a minute, look at all these people. Where's everybody going? What's yeah. going on? It's amazing, isn't it? Like, I love yeah. love those moments. It's cool. But the buzz, the buzz is incredible. So good, good choice. All right, next question. Ooh. <laughs> That's <really> Are you <laughs> <laughs> Are you a home chef or takeaway? King. Oh, well, mm. it's kind of like, like f- food is a convenient, food is not a convenient, food is a, like a necessity sort of thing. So I'll eat when I get hungry. Um, I don't really mm-hmm. sort of plan my meals out. And like if I sort of leave the house and I've forgotten to eat, I'm like, oh, well, there's always tomorrow. So, <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> so, so yeah, I don't know. Interesting question because food's not a huge part of my life in that sense. I think um, if I probably like buy more food than I cook, I suppose, just because like half the week I'm on my own and the other half I've got my son with me here. So we cook a little bit of top, a little bit when he's here, but um, yeah, it's sort of, it's easier, I suppose, but it's not like, mm-hmm. a, it's not like going to Macca's or anything like that. Like I'll go, yeah, go get a pub meal or I'll go get something like a mm. Indian or some, some actual meal kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I suppose take out in that sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's probably it. Yep. But combo of both by the same yeah, way. Enjoy... You know, a little bit of going out, a little bit of eating yeah, in. I enjoy yeah. cooking, actually, um, even though food's not a huge part. Like I do enjoy the cooking side of things, but it's just it's it's hard to motivate myself to cook when there's not really – like when it's just me, I just kind of go, nah, I don't – like what's the point? <laughs> yeah. yeah, throw something together. So long as you get fed and you're looking after yourself, that's yeah, the main well, that's thing. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick, we're down to the last question and then you're out of the hot seat. What are your top three priorities in life? (laughs) Wow. 
Big question. <laughs> Final question, big question. Sorry about that. That's a huge question. Uh, all right, <laughs> top three priorities. So my son would be the first. Um, I think that success in, in business or success would be the second, I think. Like, so for me, yeah, it's I want to make sure that, that we're okay and that like we're, you know, good no matter what life throws us. Um, and then third would be actually sort of travel and adventure. So I think, yeah, I need, I need, I need adventure. Um, I love a bit of spontaneous trips here and there. And um, yeah, so for me, they're probably my three priorities. I love the fact that you popped in the word adventure. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think, you know, no point just going somewhere for the sake of going there. Like, nah. you know, I want to go and explore and I want to um, see something new. I want to experience something new. So, mm -hmm. yeah, for me, that's that's cool. And Patrick, just a follow-up question from that. In the past, when you have travelled potentially for, for work or for clients, whatever the, mm. the case may be, will you always take a little bit of time to explore while you're there? Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. 100%. In fact, like, so inter interesting point. So I used to, like, I was going out. Um, to to hide and so it's like a five hour drive away um, and I used to do that once a month and I would literally um, you know try and sort of generate some new clients by just being present mm -hmm. um, but also catching up with the existing clients but I I used to not confirm the meetings with clients um, and I would do that kind of half intentionally because I was sort of like hey you know what if they're not available oh well I can just go and explore <laughs> So people would be like, don't you want to like confirm that? So, you know, drive all that way. I'm like, not really. Like, I'm just, <laughs> if they're there, they're there. If they're not, well, I'll go back next month. Like, it's, it's okay. So no, 100% for me, it's um, absolutely all about that. Like, I'll, I'll definitely make time to go explore, to go do something. Um, and then to have, yeah, it's, it's almost like the, the business aspect of it is a little bit secondary <laughs> for me personally. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's, I'm going there for the business. I'm going there to do the thing, but, um, but yeah, I'll absolutely make sure that I've got the, the space and the time for some me time as well. So. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Work life balance. That's what it's that's all it. about. <laughs> oh my God. So good. So good. Now, Patrick, before we wrap it up, where can we find you? Uh, yeah, so nomaddesigns.com.au as far as the website goes. Um, Nomad Designs on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn as Patrick Twells. I'm on Twitter, I'm kind of Clubhouse Patrick Twells. So sort of, yeah, there's a lot of spaces you can find me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I, I, I spend a bit of time online um, in the social media space as well. Just, again, just networking, meeting mm -hmm. people, um, really enjoy that so it's it doesn't feel like work to me because it's not like it's just how you like yeah learning things and, and teaching mm -hmm. things so it's cool awesome thank you patrick i'm going to pop all of those links into the show notes for the listeners it's been amazing what a great conversation thank you so much for coming on to the show i've really appreciated this discussion today no problem at all thanks for having me awesome thanks patrick we'll chat again really soon yeah no worries Thank you for tuning in to the Biz Nation podcast. It was lovely to share this episode with you. Remember to subscribe to catch all future episodes and I would also very much love it if you'd leave me a rating or a review. Until next time, remember that you can also go from headache to heaven in a heartbeat.